We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet. And today, our stop, I would say, is Valley, Alabama. That's not quite right. I would say is West Point, Georgia. That's not quite right either because Coach Trevor Ziders is at an undisclosed location right now in Ohio getting ready to take part in some football camp activities. So, Coach, thank you first off for stopping and taking some time to visit with us about the Point Sky. <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity and the time. I'm currently in Dayton, Ohio, and we'll be headed to uh, Cincinnati later to work a camp at the University of Cincinnati and then just kind of making the rounds, trying to find 2024 guys already as, as we move forward and get closer to the 2023 season. But we're already shifting gears and headed into next year's recruiting piece. That is, a, that is a lot on your plate, which, by the way, your location now has been disclosed. So we we want to make sure you're you're all right and taken care of. They're getting ready for camp. And, and Coach, again, I appreciate that. Four and seven last year. Let's start right there. 2022, four and seven overall. You start off 0 and five, and then things just seem to click in your first season as the head coach. You win four of the last six. Well, you know, it took a little while. Um, biggest thing is we're trying to change the culture or we're changing the culture. Um, and that is never a quick process by any means. You know, you're, you're trying to change a mindset and changing that mindset was a challenge. You know, you had to get guys to believe in what you were trying to do, believe in your system, believe in your, your plans, believe in your scheme, um, believe in each other, belief in each other. You know, it, it just took a while. And then, as they slowly started to see the benefits and they started to see the product on the field get better, they started to see results, that's when it all started coming. And they knew we were close early on. I mean, that 14-10 loss to Faulkner, they knew we were close and, and you know, uh, gave up a 85-yard pick six right before the half. That was, you know, a, a big blow. Um, we played Cumberland pretty well, well except for we – three and a half minutes in the second quarter that we just self imploded and um, really, really struggled in that game. Um, you know, we played Bethel tight the first half. I think we're the only team in the country to shut them out possibly in a half of football last year. Um, so we, we, you know, we started to put some good football together, but we couldn't sustain it. And then finally had that opportunity against St. Andrews and the guys saw what worked and they saw how it all went. And, and it just, you know, that that made it better for all of us. And then once they got that taste, they realized they were like, hey, this actually works. Let's continue to make this better. And then from there, you know, it just was one after another. And then they started to go week to week, understand the process, work to prepare, and then the end results came. So it it, it takes a while, but at the same time, we're just very pleased that they got to that point and that they took it seriously enough that we improved over the time right and and a, a big positive in that too because when you start off struggling like that i mean it, it can be a lost season and, and the boys decided that was not going to be the case so you take some momentum now into 2023 you bring back an, a number of players let's start with someone who had an impact on the offense last year Emory bryant comes back for one more season for you uh last year leading receiver for you actually more than double the receptions of anybody else uh, on the team and he was able to get things done all-purpose leader as well and he scored a couple of receiving touchdowns he scored uh, a couple of kick return touchdown scored a touchdown rushing he actually had uh, a fumble recovery he took back 73 yards for a scoop scoop and score there too so obviously an all-around player well it, it the the scoop and score was actually funny because it wasn't truly a fumble but one of our linebackers had caught the kickoff and was starting to get hit lateraled it back to emory and that's the one that he took for the 73 um you know it, it you, you can't make that up because it was just so <laughs> impromptu and it was not it wasn't a play call let's put it that way uh, but at the same time, though, he Emery's a great young man. Um, he's doing a heck of a job. Um, he is probably one of the, the guys that we know has to produce for us this fall. Um, you know, we, we're trying to think up different ways to get him the football and get him in space so that he can be the player that he is. Um, he, he had a very nice junior day at Mercer. Uh, that's a big deal because he may get some looks. Not sure yet, but you know, ran a four or five for some NFL scouts and 
that's pretty fast on a on watch for the NFL guys. But at the same time, um, he just brings a lot to the table for us. He's a dynamic young man, could play receiver, could play running back. But, you know, we're going to feature him at receiver, can return punts, can return kicks. So it's he's really one of our guys. We, we you know, we need him. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and when I say that, you know, I, I say it from the perspective of he's a playmaker, he's a game changer, he's a difference maker for us. And we we have to have those types of guys to make us better. And he's, a, he's one of those guys that he does what you're asking him to do. Um, he's done even better in the classroom. His grades have gotten better since we've, we've come in and, and everything else. And you just see the progression that the young man's making. He's maturing. And he's really setting himself up to be a success, not only on the field, but off the field as well. Coach, there were a couple of players that saw time at quarterback for you, and I'm, I want to look through the rest of the offense if we can. Now, Mitchell Gossett uh, coming back for you. I saw action in, in all throughout the season for you. And one of your recruits as well, a freshman coming in, Austin Adcock, saw time at quarterback too. And I do want to talk about that that sophomore class that, that did see – uh, you had a number of players that were able to get time for you last year as freshmen, but uh, start with the quarterback position. So quarterback right now, it's an open competition. It's going to be a battle in fall camp. Um, you know, uh, they battled through the spring and they were neck and neck. Um, they've both done some really nice things. Um, they're both working on their reads and making the right decisions. It's, it's wor working those progressions and learning what those are. Um, they both bring a little different to the table. Um, Mitch has kind of that rocket arm, you know, he can, he can definitely zing the ball pretty well. Austin actually throws one of the best deep balls I've seen a quarterback throw in a long time. So they bring a lot to the table and a lot of opportunity. Um, they're both pretty athletic for being as tall as, as they are. Um, and, you know, they, they give us opportunities to use them both in the run game and in the pass game. And we just need to continue to utilize both of them as they continue to work and grow. Um, now, Austin's got a little bit more time than Mitch does in regards to time left. But, you know, both of those two bring a lot to the table. Um, and then we're bringing in a couple of young guys that we're hoping to come in and compete immediately. And we'll see who takes the job. You know, you never know what that's going to look like. Uh, we've got a, a young man from Loganville High School, Johnny Crow. And then a young man from Hiram High School here in Georgia, uh, Samir Wiley. And then Brent White is still also on the roster. Now, we're not sure where he's going to be at in regards to his recovery because last year against Reinhardt, unfortunately, he tore his knee up pretty good. Head surgery, of course, but, you know, it's now in the rehab process, et cetera. So we've got a nice little battle that we're preparing for in fall camp. But, you know, who ends up taking it? Because – Let's be realistic. We can't play three quarterbacks or four quarterbacks in a season and be successful. It's just not – that's not the way this game's set up. You need that one guy. And and that's the next part is we're really trying to settle in on that one guy who can take it, lead it, and become great. Yeah, usually, Coach, when, when you see more than, uh, more than two or three quarterbacks uh, that are seeing a lot of time, it's not a good sign for the way the season is heading. <laughs> the rest of the, the the offense too, and and I'd, I'd ask you about the the running game too. You were talking about the, the quarterbacks and the passing, and we mentioned Bryant too. But statistically, uh, the running game may not have been what you wanted it to be. There's room for improvement there. So yeah, we struggled a little bit. Um, part of it was our, our offensive line. It was a new scheme. Um, what they had done in the past wasn't what they were doing. So it just took them a little while to gel and start to understand how at the same time, that's another position. We, I think we played nine different offensive linemen last year at some point in time. Towards the end of the season, we started three freshmen on the offensive line. I mean, anytime you're starting that many young guys up front, you're going to see some growing pain. So, you know, we, we got the opportunity. Now, the great part is we have nine guys coming back that have had experience now in a college game. So there's positives to that as well, just because of where that's at. Now they did. I, I thought they showed improvement as the year went, especially towards the end of the year, we were running the ball much better. And now we're going to have to come out. And we're going to have to be ready. Come game one, Bethel has a great run defense. We're going to have to be ready to battle them early on. And it, it's going to be a challenge. So, 
Um, you know, we, we've got to work on that, but our, our run game is, is getting better. Um, now, you know, we've got a stable of backs and a lot of them, unfortunately, again, due to injury, we played nine running backs last year. If you would have told me we were going to play nine running backs, I would have said, no, nah, there's, there's no way, but you, you can't prepare for what the season throws at you. And we ended up, you know, with multiple guys go down with season ending injuries. Three of them had to have surgery, et cetera. And, you know, it just, it kills you in the end. Cause then the continuity and what you're used to, it's just not there. And then what they're seeing running wise, whatever. So we're excited about the future. We're excited about where that's headed. And, and we've got some guys coming in that we think can have the ability to do some great things, but there that's the one position where we know that we also need a little more production. We we've talked about that. We need more production and uh, hopefully between the offensive line having the experience that they now have mixed with the running game, understanding the scheme that we should now be better as we continue to move this thing forward. We're visiting now with coach Trevor Ziders from point in his second season as the head coach, been with the program a little bit longer with that here on Midwest sports net. And I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel and continue to watch as we are previewing the 2023 college football season. Coach, uh, we moved to the other side of the ball, and you bring back Gavin Graham, and you were talking about offensive linemen. Uh, on the defensive line, he was a staple for you last season. So we're excited about the D-line. I mean, right now, six of the, the top eight that we had last fall are coming back. Um, that's a big deal. Anytime that you can return that many guys on, on your defensive front, because now – that gives us the ability to run guys in. We can have substitutions. We can use guys over and over again that, you know, if you're trying to use – if you don't feel guys are prepared or ready to go, it can be tough. Um, then they get worn out. And even again, that's another position towards the end of the year where guys got time because we had some injuries there and we had to have guys play. Um, but at the same time, Gavin did a great job for us – I mean, defensive freshman of the year in the conference um, gave a lot of tackles fits early on. Um, he's just got to continue to grow and mature. But we think if we get some other people beside him, it's only going to help make that even better. Um, you know, we've got both our D tackles and James Bryant, and Promise Williams coming back. Uh, they did an outstanding job for us early in the season. Um, we've got Gabe Donnelly and Julius Bullard also returning. And those two were on the edge last year, a bunch for us. So we feel that we've got some guys that can really help Gavin become even a bigger difference maker. And then we've got a couple coming in that, you know, we'll see how they battle in fall camp, but we're excited about the possibilities that they bring to the table as well. Young man out of a uh, minor high school in Birmingham, Thad Parson is a big, big boy. We think he could be a, a, a big insert in that inside part of the D line. And then there's one or two others, but, you know, we're, we're excited about where that leads. Um, and just having six of the eight return with experience, again, it's just that much farther along as to where we're going to be. And we're really excited about that because I'm a big believer and you're only going to be as good as your offensive and defensive lines will allow you to be. And now we've got that experience on both sides of the ball. So hopefully that's a, a big help as we move forward. And that experience, that's something that, that you – can't manufacture in practice. I mean, you have to have that. It has to be there on the field to get done. Coach, that's a that's a big thing. Key Larkin comes back for you as well. One of the leaders, I believe the leading returning tackler from last season. Tell us about your linebackers in that secondary. Well, I'm very excited about the linebacking core. Um, you know, it, it's going to be tough to replace Aaron Anderson. I mean, All-American for a reason. Uh, defensive player of the year in the conference for a reason. But you know, his backup, B.J. Finley, B.J. Uh, has been there and is back there and up his entire time, so he's finally ready for his opportunity. Um, Key just needs to continue to get better. I mean, Key has done a great job for us, very impressed with him, had a good spring, um, and he is starting to mature as an individual, which is only going to help make him that much better. Um, I'm really excited to see his continued growth. Uh, playing that outside linebacker, hybrid, strong safety, nickel-type position that we need, and, and he's done a great job for us there. And as he continues to learn the nuances of the position, he's only going to get better. I mean, he played some his freshman year, started a couple games his freshman year due to some injuries and whatever, 
and has really started to solidify himself and take charge of that position. And then the Mike linebacker position, we've got Sam Juan Warner and Ethan Benz, and both of those two are coming back as well. Both played last year. Both made big plays in key times and have the opportunity to, for them to continue to get better. So, you know, having a lot of those linebackers back, it, it makes me feel a little more comfortable because I'm not worried about okay, who do we got behind this front line that's going to be able to stop anybody? Now, these guys have that experience, and it's just now continuing to improve on that. And it's the same thing in the secondary. You know, we lost Quan Neal. Quan was one of our uh, safeties, but, you know, the guys that we had playing with him and alongside of him, they all returned for the most part. So, you know, in reality, with with Davion Dukes and Caleb Wade back there in the secondary. I think that they're going to mend that safety spot and be in good shape. Um, the corners, you know, we rotate guys in too, of course, but our corners, we, we've got a pretty good battle. Care Thomas did a phenomenal job for us in the spring, along with uh, a young man by the name of A.J. Braxton. A.J. was on the roster last year, but didn't crack the lineup. Now A.J. looks like he's going to crack the lineup. He had a phenomenal spring. Is, is, and then – the one who really had probably the best spring out of everybody in the secondary was Shaquan Bickley. Um, he just did a phenomenal job, really started to understand. And even the offensive coaches at times were like, where'd Bickley come from? Like he's making plays that he didn't make last year. So it's exciting to have that, that opportunity and to see these guys develop. And now it, in, it's a little different defensively because for us on the defensive side of the ball, this is the same system that we've been running now for four years. So these guys have really started to be able to understand the nuances of it and get down the little, you know, the little things or the little details that you don't necessarily get when you're just trying to learn and run a defense or an offense for that matter. And then that's the other side offensively. We're going into year two with the offense. I mean, on both sides of the ball, it, it should help us. But getting back to this, the secondary, um, the young men that we have, they've really taken to it. And then we threw in a couple new wrinkles this spring. And, you know, we, we just had guys start to step up and make plays. So, I mean, we've got four in the other corner, Kiwan Figs. I, I think those four young men are going to have some opportunities to make a lot of plays for us this upcoming fall. And then um, Roman Jones is a senior who's coming back. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He's kind of our nickel, can play linebacker, can play safety, can play some corner for us. So he brings a lot to the table, too. So we've got some guys back there that we feel really comfortable. And that's the thing. This this our COVID senior class, because that's all I know to call it. Um, we've got nine guys out of that class that returned. And, and that's really partly why we're doing as well as we are, because you've got some guys there that have been through it and now they understand it. And now they're the ones who should help really build this legacy and, and, and leave a uh or start a tradition of hopefully what is turning into a very big winning tradition here at Point as they continue to get older. And that's um, Emery Bryant, Brent White, Sincere Carnes, BJ Finley, Sam Juan Warner, Davion Dukes, Roman Jones. Um, these are all guys that have been around. I'm sure I'm missing one or two in there, but these are guys who stuck through it, stuck through the COVID year, worked through the, the down year, and now – they're where we're at, we're at now, which is what I'm excited about because watching those guys grow, they've started to help these younger guys grow too, which is a big thing for us because the more you help each other grow, the better off we're all going to be in the end. And Coach, I, I have seen that in some other programs too, the ones that have stuck stuck it out <clears throat> Excuse me, through that COVID year and through that down, like you talked about, through the down year and big things look like that they could very well be in – in the future for the Skyhawks. I, I wanted to mention special teams because I think it's interesting. Matthew Moses, uh, coming back, sophomore, punter. Uh, Giovanni Martinez, kicker, also a sophomore. But your special teams, <laughs> your kickers, your punter wears 96 and your kicker wears 97. Doesn't happen like that all the time. I thought that was humorous. Well, and here's the thing. You know, those numbers are normally reserved for D linemen. We, we get that, but um, when we were looking through last year, the lower numbers were all taken and we're like, okay, well, we got to have numbers in where they're eligible because they can potentially throw the ball, catch the ball, whatever. So we're like, we, we better put them in some numbers that are eligible. And of course, if you pay attention, you know, that's one through 49 and then it shuts down until you hit 80. 
and I'm, we were like, well, we're not going to really put them in wide receiver numbers. You know, we, we don't think they would look good in those jerseys. And sure enough, we came, we settled on the 96 and 97. And yeah, neither one of them, I don't know that they like it or dislike it, but at the same time, um, you know, it makes them eligible numbers for the games. And, and, and people do get a kick out of it because they're like, why are they so high? Well, that's just what we, we figured out when we were able to make it work. But, uh, you know, if they want to change in the future, they haven't mentioned it yet. But if they want to, the, the opportunity is potentially there. So, but it makes it fun. But no, they they did a great job for us last year. Um, you know, Geo was a all conference kicker for us, which, you know, having a freshman take on that ability and, and work through that mentally, you know, it's a challenge. Um, you know, it is a challenge to to kick in the collegiate level. You're kicking off the ground. You're not used to that rush because, you know, high school, yeah, you maybe saw a rush here and there, but not as sustained or as hard. And he did a really nice job. I mean, he he won us a ball game or two just because of his kicking. So, we, you know, we really needed that. And Matt Matt did a great job where he changed – he flipped the field for us a couple times. And, you know, field position is one of the biggest things in football. I mean, if you look at all the, the statistics, the analysts, everything will tell you that correlation to where the ball is at is pretty much the same percentage that they're going to score. If they get the ball on your 10, they got a 90% chance of scoring. If they get the ball on their 10, it's a 10% chance of score. So, you know, having that ability in the kicking game is a big deal. And I'm very pleased with both of those two. Now, we have a couple coming in. We have one, uh, Christian Seha, who's a local guy from LaGrange High School. I think he's going to come in and battle for the kickoff opportunities, at least if nothing else. He's got a really strong leg. And then we also have a, a transfer coming in from Taylor University in Indiana, a young man by the name of Stephen Ernest. Um, I, I think he could have the ability to kick too because he kicked at Taylor. So it's really, you know, he's he's used to it. Now it's just a matter of what those guys do. And the biggest thing that we talk a lot about in our program is we're all about competition. We want daily competition. And if you don't want to be a part of competition, probably not the right program for you. But we're excited about what these guys are going to come in and compete and show us and the opportunities that they're going to have. Coach, I want to say really quickly, thank you for your time. I mean, I'm enjoying learning about the Skyhawks right now, and that there is a lot here, but I, I did want to take just a little bit more. I had a couple more questions that I wanted to present to you, and I appreciate everyone watching and sticking around with us for this today here on Midwest Sports Net. A big sophomore class, and I think that's a testament then to your recruiting as the head coach. Again, been with the program for a while. It's your second season as the head coach, so you did get some time there because you were announced as the as the lead man in December. So you got to be a part of that recruiting class last year. You brought in a number. You talked about uh, the the players getting experience. A lot of freshmen got experience, and that sophomore class is big for you. And there is potential for so much more in the next couple of years. We're very excited. Uh, you know, not only is our sophomore class going to be a, a big class, we got another good class. We think just as good, if not better, with this freshman class coming in. Um, we expect some guys to compete and compete quickly. Um, you know, where that goes, um, you know, you don't know exactly. But, you know, our, our sophomore class is definitely part of the main core of what we're trying to get done here. Um, you know, with Austin Adcock at quarterback, we think he could really be the foundation in the future, depending on how he continues to grow. Um, you know, running back to Deer Mitchell, um, Yes, he's got some academic issues right now, but if he's a, able to overcome those, he could be really, really good for us. Uh, we have a couple um, other guys up front now. You know, we've got three freshmen. Well, they were freshmen. They'll be sophomore. Three sophomore O linemen that we expect to contribute mightily this upcoming fall, and that's off of what they did last year um, and continuing to move forward. Um, we played five freshman D linemen last year. And when I said we have six returning, those guys are factored into multiple parts of that. So that's a big part there. Ethan Benz is a sophomore at the linebacking core. Um, Caleb Wade's a sophomore in the secondary. Geo and Matt are both sophomores. So there's a lot of sophomores right now that are main factors within the program and will continue to be factors as we move forward. And there's a couple other guys in there. Um, now, because of... Red shirts and whatnot, Isaac Jones is now a sophomore. Um, he didn't get 
much opportunity last year because we redshirted him. But this year, he's going to have the opportunity to really show what he can start to do. Um, and there's a couple other positions here and there, but but that sophomore class has really been um, a big bolster to what we're trying to get done. And they bought in. They bought in quick, and it is shown. And those guys now, I'm telling you, they're going to be the, the catalyst that pushes this program forward, in my opinion. Well, the future definitely looks like it could be bright for you all there. Coach, the schedule says the future is not that far away, about two and a half months before things get going. I know you have camp right now, and you're excited about what's going on, but uh, things get underway for a point on August 26th. You're at home. You take on Bethel. You mentioned them a little bit earlier. They had a fantastic season last year, undefeated through the regular season. Then you go on the road to Division II of Aldosta State. That is going to be a challenge, I'm sure. Back at home, Thomas, a new program there. And then on the road against Lindsey Wilson. That's before you get into conference play. Now, the school, by the way, and it should be noted, uh, the program moving to the Southern States Conference, except for football, Appalachian schedule still in football, and, and that's on the road at Kentucky Christian to get things there. So uh, we talked about the opening of the season last year. Schedule's not any easier this year. No, and, and you know, on one hand, we're, we're very excited about what's coming up, um, you know, because as we've told our guys, look, after those first four games, you're going to know where you sit. You're going to know what type of football team you potentially have and how good or how bad it could be. And, you know, we keep talking to them about the fact that, look, this is a great opportunity. Bethel, they were number three in the country last year to end the season. Like you just said, undefeated regular season, had a great year. Uh, Coach Jasper does a phenomenal job there. He's going to have those guys ready to play when they come in that Saturday night. But it's also an opportunity for us. And that's one of the biggest things to me. It's an opportunity for us to be a, a, a good football team and, you know, really show what we're made of. Um, we did not play them well in the second half last year at all. We didn't move the football hardly at all um, in that second half of that game. And I know that those guys want another shot at that redemption, you know. So that that's going to be a big game for us. And it's an opportunity for us. I'm hoping that that kind of turns into a showcase game. I don't know what else is really going on. I, I mean, I know that's the first weekend of NAI football, but, you know, the bigger schools, Division One, Division Two, or FCS, FBN, whatever you want to call it, they don't open until the following Saturday or the following week. So it's a lot of opportunity for us to really showcase what NAI football can be, but it's also an opportunity for us to showcase it against one of the top programs in the country right now at the NAI level. So we're excited about that opportunity and really excited to see what can go on there. Then after that, the following one, Valdosta State, that's a, a phenomenal opportunity for the guys in state. I mean, if you're from the state of Georgia, and, you know, you don't want, if you don't end up at Georgia, Georgia Tech, Georgia Southern, then you're starting to look at West Georgia and Valdosta. And Valdosta has always been one of the top Division II programs in the country, evidenced by their national championships and everything else. So I think that's a great opportunity. And if I'm a, one of our guys, I'm like, heck, let's play those guys because – we know what they're at. And if we can end up, if it's one of those catch 22s. And what I mean by that is this, if we beat them, we weren't supposed to, but if we lose to them, we weren't supposed to beat them in the first place. So it's a great opportunity. I think and it's a lot of opportunity for our guys to just let it all hang out and leave it all on the field. Um, Thomas university, brand new program. Don't know much about Thomas yet. So I, I don't even know what to think of that game yet. Um, hopefully we'll get some film on them and, and be able to, to check them out. Um, I know it's a, a new, it's a different way of thinking because I know they're using some old military guys and whatever. So I don't know what all is going on with Thomas, but I know that they're probably going to be well disciplined. And probably I th I've heard they're going to run triple, but as to whether <laughs> what type of triple option, don't know yet, haven't seen it. So until we see that, that's going to be uh, one of those challenges. And then going to Lindsey Wilson again, another challenge last year, another playoff team. So, you know, Three of the first four out of the gate are going to be major challenges. We know that. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited for the test at hand because the other side of it is if we want to say that we're going to be one of the best in the country, you got to play one of the, some of the best in the country. That's the only way you're ever going to know. And, you know, we should know pretty much coming out of that four-game stretch what type of season we have the opportunity to have. And then 
bye week, thankfully, I think the bye week falls at one of the best places it could possibly fall. <laughs> and then seven weeks of, um, well, six of our seven last, or six of our last seven games are conference games with the only out of conference game being the Faulkner crossover, which is kind of turning into a rivalry. Although we got to win one of those if it's ever actually going to be a rivalry. <laughs> we, we keep getting close. We just can't seem to get over the hump. So, you know, that's going to be an extra challenge for us as well. Um, Reinhardt, of course, is in there. They're homecoming this year. That's going to be a major challenge for us. And they're kind of the big dog in the AAC. That I think it's like six straight conference titles. And, you know, we got to take out the, the champ before we can, you know, consider ourselves that team. So, you know, we, we got a, a very good schedule ahead of us. But we've got a lot of challenges on that, and, and we've got to step up to the challenge to meet it. Um, you know, and, and going to Kentucky, Christian, that's never a short trip. That's never an easy trip. So that's always going to be a challenge. Um, then we get Bluefield at home, and that's a football team that is much improved. We struggled. took They took one from us last year. Um, you know, that was a great game. 20 to 14, had every opportunity, just didn't, didn't finish. Um, then, uh, union played us tough last year. We kicked the field goal to win 23, 20 as time expired. We got to go to their place this year and they played us tough there two years ago. Then we get Reinhardt coming in and then we get the new, the new guy in Pikeville. Um, and I know coach Phipps will have those guys ready to go and they'll, they'll do an excellent job at Pikeville. Um, so I, you know, what we're going to see out of that yet, not 100% sure, but I know he's going to have a good football team set and ready to go. And unfortunately, that's a late October game in Pikeville, Kentucky. I don't know that our Southern guys are going to like that too much. You know, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so the cold doesn't bother me nearly as much as it bothers them. Um, so, you know, that that's going to be a challenge. And then our last two games are Faulkner and St. Andrews. And going to Faulkner, that game is always a challenge for us. I mean, like I said, that's – one that's starting to turn into a rivalry along with Reinhardt, but it's kind of hard to be a rival unless you actually win a game or two. And then uh, St. Andrews, that last game is is going to be senior day and hopefully capping off a good season. But, you know, we, we got to see where that leads. Yeah. Well, Coach, listen, it's it you you presented a great picture today. I have thoroughly enjoyed the time listening, and I look forward to following the Skyhawks this season, knowing a lot more about them today. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here. We're continuing to preview the 2023 college football season and uh, doing it today with Coach Trevor Ziders, who's in Ohio right now. We'll be back in uh, West Georgia, East Alabama, very, very soon, I know, and looking forward to the camp. There will be competition in the camp as well, and I'm excited about hearing about that. Coach, again, thank you so much for taking time with us today. We appreciate that. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about our guys and our program. It's the opportunity to let everybody know about what we're trying to get done, and we, we thank you. At the end of the day, we're just trying to do it all for the glory of the Lord, and at the end of the day, that's all we can ask for. So we thank mm -hmm. you for your time as well. I appreciate that, Coach. Thank you, sir.